consciousness and mind. Human beings who have not delved deeper into themselves find both mind and consciousness as synonym. Only when one becomes more aware of oneself, then one can see different degrees, types, powers of consciousness at the mental, physical, psychic and spiritual levels. Mind is modified consciousness that brings forward mental energy. A man can stand back in his mental consciousness and also watch his mental energy performing acts like thinking, planning, etc. With the process of introspection, one can find that consciousness observes and energy acts. They are two separate, consciousness and energy. With a little practice, anyone can do that. And when he begins to observe his own thoughts, feelings and actions, it means the process has already begun. Whenever anyone wants to develop consciousness for true action, it can come in several ways. You may get the habit or faculty of watching your movements in such a way that you can see the impulse to action coming and also observe its nature at the same time. A consciousness may come which feels uneasy whenever a wrong thought, impulse to action or feeling is there and finally something within you may warn and stop you from doing anything wrong. This happens naturally to some people. Human body has its own consciousness from where it acts. Our surface mind knows very little about this body consciousness. The mind feels it only in an imperfect manner and it only sees the results, not the cause. When one continues the journey, one can become aware of this body consciousness, its movements and also the forces that act upon it both internally and externally. As an individual, each one of us carries a personal consciousness, but this remains entrenched in the consciousness of one's own body and also in touch with his surroundings. But this happens only through his body, senses and the mind. Each moment, cosmic forces are pouring into him without his knowledge. He becomes only aware of his thoughts and feelings which surface. There are many that remain under the surface and these form the part of the unconscious mind. These he considers as his own. All thoughts and feelings come to the mind from outside like waves. All these thoughts and feelings take particular form in him and surface once these get in. However, these do not enter his body immediately. He carries with him an environmental consciousness. Theosophists call this as aura. If he can become conscious of this, then he can recognize thoughts, passions, suggestions and the forces of illness. Also, he can prevent these from entering when things and thoughts are thrown out of you, they often do not go together. Instead, these take refuge in his environmental atmosphere. From there, these tries to get in again and remain outside, waiting to get an opportunity to enter. If you are unconscious, they find every single opportunity to enter in you again. There always exists an inner and outer consciousness. This surrounds our being and acts upon all its levels. An ordinary man only remains aware of his surface self while he remains quite unaware of all that is hidden under the surface. And yet 
what is on the surface, what we know of ourselves and even believe that is all we are, is only a part of our being. However, the larger part of our being remains hidden below the surface, behind the veil, the occult and can be known only through meditation. Our conscious mind is one ten and unconscious mind is nine ten parts of the entire consciousness. That is the reason many times we say things that are not needed at that moment. It is whenever a circumstance and situation comes, the unconscious mind surfaces. Many times people talk and they say things while they are asleep, which they do not know. So this is all that has been stored in you in the process of regular movement in day-to-day -day life as part of our interaction with objects and beings. This happens more so with so-called religious people who have to maintain a certain demeanor on the surface and deep down they are different. You follow a certain pattern, you are conditioned into to act in a particular way, be courteous to the people. Although you do not want to show courtesy to the person, yet still our morality, our social behavior and conditioning says that we have to be courteous to the people, to the elders, to all those. Then all those things that enter you unknowingly are stored in your unconscious and the surface when they are not needed. When you are asleep, that time the unconscious mind surfaces in the form of dreams. People start talking in sleep, cursing, getting on angry and all kind of things which they would not do knowingly on the surface. Materialistic psychology calls this hidden part as inconscient and they do accept the practicality of this greater, more powerful yet profound aspect than the conscious self on the surface. Hindu scriptures and Upanishads call this as sleep self. This part is infinitely greater intelligence. It is of the nature of omniscient, omnipotent, prisoner, the issue. However, the psychic science call this hidden consciousness as subliminal self. It has more power, more knowledge and a freer field for movement than the smaller self that is on the surface. The part of you that you know, this is like the vastness of the ocean while the waking consciousness, which is only one-tenth of the whole, is like the waves on the surface of the ocean. It is very complex and cannot be described by a single word. What we call our mind is only the outer one, which is instrumental for the partial expression of a larger mind, which can only be known by going within. There are four layers of consciousness. The waking layer is the first one. It is on the surface and remains aware of the material universe alone. This is a part of our embodied existence and remains dominated by the physical mind. Next is the dream consciousness which corresponds to a subtler layer and the plane of the mind behind. During our waking state, we operate through our senses, mind and material universe, the objects and beings. During this state, numerous impressions gather in our mind and when we enter the dream state, the surface mind begins to unwind and we do not get the same concrete reality as in the waking state. The sleep state of consciousness is the next state. This state belongs to the causal body. This state remains beyond our experience because the causal body is not yet evolved in us. 
and its faculties remain inactive. Thus, we remain connected to this plane in a state of dreamless sleep. Of this we remain un unaware. It is only after this dreamless sleep that we get invigorated. The whole night we continue to dream. It is only in approximately two hours we get ourselves connected to this state. It is during this state mystics say man and God are in each other's company or the finite and infinite energy merge with one another. It is because of this we feel invigorated. Everyone has to discover this period. Up to this state it is easier to reach. However, the fourth is very rare to attain. This is called by the masters as Turiya or the fourth one or the fourth dimension. This state is the consciousness of our pure self-existence or our absolute being. We do not have any relation with it at all or with whatsoever mental reflections we may receive in our dreams on our waking or during the dreamless sleep state. A time comes in the life of every seeker when he is aware of living in two worlds simultaneously or we may say two consciousness at the same time or two parts of the same existence. As he is now, he lives in the outer self but he will go more and more inward. This continues until the process is reversed. Then he lives within his consciousness and feels the outer as something on the surface formed as an instrument for inner self-expression in the material world. Then from within a power works on the outer to make it a conscious instrument so that finally the inner and outer get fused into one another and become one. This is what Swami Vivekananda said, the reality lies within and outside is a mere projection of the inner self. Someone told a Sufi master that he does not get time for meditation because of his busy schedule. At this the Sufi master responded, I do not have time. So both of us have the same problem. But there is a vast difference between the two. You do not have time for the inner world and I do not have time for the outer world. You live in the outer world of duality which constantly binds you and thus you do not get time. I dwell in my inner world of bliss and freedom. I have to come out of this state only when I have to operate in the outer world. So I stay in the outer world not longer than it is essential for me to stay. This is something like this. You are in your honeymoon period. You come out of the bedroom only for the time it is necessary and the rest of your time is spent in your honeymoon activities.